Hey girlies! Let's go girls. Shit. <gasps> it's been like maybe two to three years since I've last posted on here. So if you're one of those 600 subscribers, then thank you so freaking much. So yeah, if you're just clicking on and it's your first time seeing this pop up again, your subscriptions, you're probably a little shook that my face is so different. Oh fuck! Google AdSense came through. Those four cents really helped me get a new face. Job itch, I don't know. There's like three other videos still up. I refuse to watch them. So you can watch those if you want. You don't have to. I just realized that I need a creative outlet. All I do is work and go to school. I was like, what the hell do I do? I need something fun to do. I need to talk to someone. Maybe a therapist? No, bitch. No, no, no. So, anyways, the title of this video, let me just say, probably gonna wonder why I'm not as what the 13 year olds say, shook. No one truly knows what happened this night. This story's not even like a hee hee type of video, but I'm gonna make it hee hee because that's just how I get over things and deal with things instead of reaching out to a therapist or dealing with my emotions. So that's why I'm also talking to the internet. The story's a little confusing. I'm gonna tell it and the way I remember it happening because I was blacked out, so it's a tough one. If you've ever seen the movie The Hangover, that's literally this whole story for me, so I had to piece it all together, and then by the end of the video, it will all make sense to you, and you'll fully understand what happened to me on the night of my 21st birthday. So on my 21st birthday, that was on Tuesday, January 23rd, and as any 21-year-old wants to do, is obviously legally drink on their birthday. Like, the goal is to get figgity figgity fucked up. Wasn't it your 22nd? No. I'm 21. I thought I was 22. I'm not 22. It was on a Tuesday, so none of my friends could do anything on my birthday because it's a Tuesday. So my friends, Andrea, Sandra, and Sarah all came with me to this restaurant in WeHo and we just had some casual drinks and food. Afterwards, Sarah and I just started walking the streets of Santa Monica Boulevard. Ultimately, ended up meeting this guy outside of a club that Sarah couldn't even get into because she didn't have her ID on her. So we just sat outside on these stools and started drinking because I could legally buy it. And this man approached us and he started talking to Sarah and I and he was saying how he was a producer. He said he like did big things and he started pouring drinks into our drinks and just sitting with us and hanging. And then he invited us to a park. Bitch, what the fuck? And most normal people would say, you're fucking weird. <laughs> like, I'm not going to a park with you. And I was low-key down. I was like, sure, we'll come to the park. And Sarah goes, no, bitch, we're not. And here is a text combo from this moment. I sent my location because I think I was actually like, gonna go to the park with them. And obviously I'm joking, but... Wait, how did he ask the question? He was like, you guys should come to the park. <laughs> we were talking for a long time. He wanted me to go to the park with Sarah in the dark, drink his weird drinks that he had, that he started spiking our drinks with. Having bad vibes, Sarah's having bad vibes. I was like, do we leave him though? I don't want to like be rude, because he was a nice guy, like he looked normal, but like inviting us to the park at midnight. Anyways, we ended up Uber choppering out of that situation. That Uber was called the second it was going down. And you're probably wondering what this story has to do with the rest of the story. Well, folks, this is what I like to call foreshadowing. And being the smart person I am, not even following my own advice to never go to West Hollywood again, I decided why not invite all my friends to West Hollywood and party again on Friday. I invited all my friends to a Mexican restaurant and then afterwards we were gonna go out and do the damn thing. The best part about this Mexican dinner was I had this spray tan on, which I bought all these photos because I literally just look orange in every single pic. They're kind of iconic. After dinner, half of my friends had to go because they had other things they had to do the next day. So the only friends that could come were Sarah, Sarah, and Megan. So we all went to West Hollywood right after dinner to meet up with Ricky at this pizza parlor where we began to pregame. 
Anyways, I was already pretty drunk as fuck at this point. Let's just cut to the chase. We were at this pizza parlor, and I wanted to be more drunk because it's my 21st birthday. So I started drinking more tequila, and I shoved these pics. So show it's your birthday. We gonna party like it's Once again, the tan, not looking too hot. In person, looked super sexy, promise. <laughs> You can tell I'm a little lit. This photo just makes me laugh. I could meme this. Marching on my way to get kidnapped. Totally about to get mad. Marching there. Love that. I'm off to go get kidnapped. I'm about to get mugged. Here comes the tea, sisters. We end up going into this bar next door called Bar 10. Now, this is where the shit gets real. So I walked into this bar and I fully black. It's one of my last memories of the night. Do you remember? What I do remember from this night is after bar 10, my last memory is having some man yell at me and then being really scared and then facing a wall and like looking down at like a pin pad. I looked in the camera because I was at an ATM. I looked in the camera and I was like, Fuck my life. I was in shock that what was happening to me was happening. Looking at this camera as if like someone at City was watching the camera to help me. Just, and then the next thing I remember is wandering somewhere super lit. Like I remember having really bad lighting. And then I remember being in someone's room and throwing up. And then I woke up. And I woke up the next morning in this iconic shirt that I still wear to sleep every night. Super sexy. I love it actually. Woke up in this shirt and I was really fucking confused, <laughs> as you would be. Besides the pug shirt that I woke up in, I found my clothes in the bathroom covered in yak. Let me give you a really cute OOTD of how I woke up. <laughs> Tying it in a knot is super cute and super fun. And then I turned over and I was like, holy shit, for some reason, I don't think I have my phone. And if you've ever lost your phone from a night out or just in general, you wake up the next morning and you have the first thought like, I don't think I have my phone. And if you don't have your phone, you know you fucked up. Like you fucked up so hard. I didn't have my phone. I fucked up. Fucked up big time. Hello darkness, my old friend. And now it was only downhill. I had to figure out what happened that night. So the first thing I did when I realized I didn't have my phone was I clapped. I tried tracking my phone, that shit was turned off. Next clue I could do was go onto my bank account. Most of the time when you wake up the next morning, you wanna check your bank account and see if you did anything stupid. Like, did you spend money? Do you guys do that? Comment below, tag by your friend. I know I do that because I'm parking. And I saw three transactions. One was for a withdrawal of $150. The next was for a withdrawal of $100. And then the final one was for a withdrawal of $500. And I looked at that and I was like, um, totally. So I open my iMessage on my computer and I have a message from an unknown number. It says something along the lines of like, hi, you probably won't remember this. You owe me $30 for Ubering you home. Thank you so much, happy birthday. And I was like, who the fuck? Who the fuck? I text this girl back immediately. Go to Venmo, see the request. At this point I'm like, what do you know? Who are you? Blah, blah, blah. She told me she found me in CVS wandering the aisles, begging people for help while a security guard followed me. Hell. <laughs> she was like, yeah, like you were talking about some guy took you, you were really drunk, no one really knew what you were talking about, but you just kept talking about how some guy was following you and you got mugged. We took you from CVS to my apartment and just took care of you because you were really sick and you started throwing up, which I do remember. There was like a party or something and some guy was like talking to me and then I just like threw up. <laughs> and then I went home, somehow. So at this point I realized if I'm wandering the aisles of CVS, that's my like one memory I have of just being somewhere really awfully lit. Because if you've ever been to a CVS, that shit is awful. And I said, where is this CVS? And she said, next to the Grove. So I go onto my email. I had four Citibank emails. The emails from Citi are at like around 148, 143, telling me that there was sus activity on my account and told me whether I should accept or deny the charges because who's withdrawing nearly $800 around 2 a.m.? So I texted my friends Sarah and Megan and I asked them what they know. And they told me they left bar 10 around 110, 120 a.m. And while they were waiting for their Uber, I left with Ricky from the bar and everything was fine. They said my phone was stolen at this point and Ricky and I were going somewhere else because I got kicked out of the bar. 
And while I'm being kicked out from this bar for who knows what, I'm not that big of a person. Probably not causing a problem. Here's what I wore. Let's go, girls. Yeah, so they told me that I was leaving the bar. They didn't even know I was kicked out until I texted Ricky. And I asked Ricky, hey, what happened last night? Do you know? Because I lost everything. I have throw up on my clothes. My bracelet was stolen. My watch was gone. What happened? So then I'm asking Ricky, and Ricky tells me, I got kicked out of bar 10, so he left with me. We left Sarah behind because she just is in her own place dancing. Not a smart move. So I have no phone, and I'm kicked out of a bar. I'm just alone with Ricky at this point. And I won't confirm nor deny if this actually happened, but you told me that I chased tequila with tequila. I like to think I was roofied. We're sticking with it. He told me that we went to this other bar literally four doors down and then his last memory is just waking up in his bed. Doesn't remember anything, that's it. So at some point, Ricky and I somehow split up. 20 minutes have passed from the moment Sarah has seen me. I have been chasing tequila with tequila, then Ricky and I split and now I'm somehow all the way over by the Grove. I went to this location and saw it and it brought me back war flashbacks and I remember being there now. And I was staring at this pin pad with some guy like behind me with drawing money. Literally alone because I had no phone and I had no friends with me. I was just alone with this man in the middle of Los Angeles. I remember my only thought being like, I have to get home alive tonight. And the reason why I was doing what this man was telling me to do was because I don't know what their other options are. Do they have a gun? Like if I scream for help, is he just gonna shoot me or like is he gonna put his hand over me? Like, I don't know. Like, I didn't know what was gonna happen, so I just thought that the only thing I could do was just do what he was saying and hopefully he would leave me alone. <laughs> That's dark. My card was rejected because three of them went through. But then the final withdrawal that was trying to happen was another $500 attempt, and that one was blocked by my bank because of suspicious activity. So inside the CVS was another Citibank. ATM. That's when I was going into CVS and that's how I ended up in CVS and I think that's finally how I was able to get away from this guy because there was people around. So I see these timestamps and I'm like, so if Sarah and Megan saw me leaving this bar around 1.20 a.m. and I was then withdrawing money by the Grove at 1.48 a.m., that's around 20 minutes. So I had to be taken from West Hollywood to the Grove somehow which on maps is a 10 minute drive and if you were to walk there that's like 30 minutes definitely did not sprint it means i had to be put in a vehicle and then taken there so therefore for anyone who wants to fight me because i'm sure people are like you weren't kidnapped let's get the definition of kidnapped that's what happened unless i was like on a tandem bike i was just bicycling with my kidnapper to go get mug or on one of those four wheelers like pedaling through the streets of la to get mug either way i was just on my way to get mugged i love that part got kicked out of a bar, left my friend behind, two of my friends already left, left with Ricky, and then go to another bar, and then somehow in the span of 10 minutes, lose Ricky, and then in the span of another 10 minutes, be transported from West Hollywood with some man to the Grove to then be mugged, and then be found in a CVS, and then taken from some savior, God bless you, and woke up in my bed the next morning in a pug shirt. the part where you get sentimental as Full House does. So what I've learned folks, girlies, one, girls, guys, watch your drinks. Was I roofy? Totally could have been because West Hollywood's known for that. Also for the men out there. I didn't think something like this could happen to me just because of like the fact that I'm a boy. Especially in West Hollywood for me, it's such role reversal. Like I become the person who's preyed on. Watch your alcohol consumption in public places especially. Since it was my 21st birthday, that's why I give myself slack. But in general, like now when I go out in public, I only drink so much. Like enough where I know what's going on. Be with your friends. That night was 
literally made to be a disaster, like fate. The fact I lost my phone, the fact my friends already left, the fact I left Sarah behind, I was solely alone. I had to literally do whatever I could to get home. Now when I go out, I only drink so much so that I'm aware of my surroundings. Which is really important just for everyone to take away from this video so that you don't get kidnapped in month on your birthday. Oh, and if you're wondering, I rebought the bracelet because I'm also stupid. If you guys want to see more videos, more story times, more I don't even know, comment below what you want to see. I'm just here to have a good time. Make sure to like this video, tag five friends, and like, would you be kidnapped? <laughs> <laughs> tag five friends who you think would be kidnapped. Anyways, thank you so much. Please be safe. Bye. I don't know how to end this. I'm just going to end it. Chai. <laughs> Chai. Wait, how do I click at? Why is it still not clicking? What am I clicking? This is the best Let's go, Bye. girls.